doing Thermo 1. Um, I'm using Thermodynamics and Engineering Approach, the 8th edition. And I just pulled this problem out of the textbook, 3-43. And I went ahead and copied the, the, the water tables, the charts, um, to the right here. Uh, just for our convenience, so I'm just not referencing a bunch of BS numbers, so you guys can actually tag along and see what values I'm using. But, um, so our initial problem statement is water is at 200 kPa and 300 degrees Celsius and is contained in a piston cylinder device with stops. The water is allowed to cool at a constant pressure until it exists as a super saturated vapor and the piston rests on the stops and you can continue reading there but um so we're given a lot of information in the first few sentences and um i'm going to be using my my tv diagram my temperature and specific volume i'm not going to use the the pv so let's just kind of go ahead and so this is T, and there's our specific volume there. And draw our fancy little dome. Just draw some random points here, and we know that this is a constant pressure line. Um, hopefully we know that. And this is going to be at 200 kilopascals. So this value, or this line, represents 200 kilopascals. And it says, um, water is initially at 200 kPa. So I'm going to just go here. So our first pressure is at 200 kPa. With initial temperature, so T1 is at 300 degrees Celsius and is contained in a piston cylinder with stops. The water is allowed to cool at a constant pressure. So we already know that our second state, so P2, is going to equal our P1 because it says it's allowed to cool at a constant pressure until it exists as a saturated vapor. So that means um, I guess it kind of already hinted that it's a superheated vapor because it's allowed to cool until it exists as a saturated vapor. Our saturated vapor state is right there. Probably need to use a different. So this is our saturated vapor. And so it already said somewhere that it's allowed to cool at constant pressure. So we know it has to follow this process line. And um, we can also verify that it is a superheated vapor by looking at our tables here. And under 200 kPa, so under 200 kPa, our temperature, our saturated temperature is 120.21 um, degrees Celsius. So we know that means from this state all the way to this state, this whole temperature is equal to 120.21 and we know that because chemistry tells us that during a phase change the actual temperature of the liquid does not change it stays constant until all the liquid turns into a vapor then you have an increase in temperature um, this increase would pretty much accelerate the phase change process but um yeah, so we know that that temperature deals with uh, with this going from um, a saturated liquid to a saturated vapor. So it says that for again, so for two hundred kPa, our saturated um, our T sat is one hundred twenty point two one degrees Celsius, and our initial temperature is three hundred degrees Celsius. So it's way above one hundred twenty. So that's how, again, you can tell that it's a superheated vapor. And so, so it's going to come down until it hits P2. And then 
it says the water is allowed to cool at constant pressure until it exists as a saturated vapor and the piston rests on the stops. So going so this is going to cool and this is going to sit right there. It's going to sit on the stop, so just draw our little what cap or what have you. And so at that point, what's going to happen? Then the water continues to cool, so it's going to continue to cool even more. So we're at P2 of 200 kPa, and our T2 is... Do we even have it? The water is allowed to cool at constant pressure until it exists as a saturated vapor. So, at constant pressure, and so it says it exists as a saturated vapor. So now that means our T sat, so our T2, it has to be 120.21 degrees Celsius. And so, and then the piston rests on the stops. Then the water continues to cool until the pressure is 100 kilopascals so our state 3 is 100 kilopascals so so we're jumping out of our, our process curve or a constant pressure line for 200 kPa so now we need another line so this is going to be obviously less than 200 because this is now our 100 kPa pressure line. So now it jumps down at a constant volume because our our piston is sitting on the stops now. So whatever our volume is at at that point at at um at phase 2, I guess I should put one up here and two down there so whatever the volume is at phase two it stays constant and um for phase three so that means our volumes uh, our volume stays the same but our temperature is allowed to decrease so we know it's going to hit there somewhere so now that means we have a quality in our vapor because it exists, there's some parts that are, are vapor and some parts that are still liquid. So then the water is allowed to cool until the pr pressure is 100 kPa. On the TV diagram sketch, with respect to the saturation lines, the process curves passing through both the initial, intermediate, and final states of the water. So that's what we have done. We started at phase one, we went to phase two. And now we are ended, or we ended in phase three. Draw little arrows to show the the direction. And intermediate values label the T, P, and V values for the end states on the process curves. Find the overall change in the internal energy. So now we need to find what our delta U is. So our overall energy is going to be U1 minus U3. And now I realize that I do not I did not copy the, the superheated values. But um I guess you're just gonna have to take my word for it. But if you have the actual property tables booklet, uh it is on page twelve on table A-6. Um, the table value stays the same, so if you're looking through your textbook, I don't know what page that's on, but but it should still be table A6 and on the superheated water. You're going to look for a pressure of 0.2 megapascals. So pressure equals 0.2 megapascals. And you're going to look for temperature is equal to 300 degrees Celsius. And that's going to give you a U1. So 0.2 and 300, that's going to give you a U of 2808.8, and that is kilojoules per kilogram. So now we need to find out what U3 is, and um, we have a quality, so 
we need to we need to kind of figure this out. Well, we can figure this out because we know at phase two, it's a saturated vapor. So going back to our tables, so at 200 kPa, um, our saturated vapor has a value, specific volume value of 0.88578. So, so V2, well, that's not V, so V2 is equal to V3, and then it's equal to 0.88578 meters cubed per kilogram. 0.88578, yes. So, V3 has to be the same is the same specific volume because because the mass hasn't changed inside our our actual piston. So going back to 100 kPa, we have a VF value of 0 0.001043 and 1.6941. So our V value that we're looking for or to find the quality the equation is VF plus X and VFG. Now VFG is just equal to VG minus VF. Specific volumes or whatever U, H, entropy, good stuff. So this value we already know because it has to be 0.88578. What we're looking for is our quality. So using this we have 0.88578 is equal to, so our VF at 100 kPa is 0 0.001043. 0 0.001043 oh that should be plus plus our quality and our VFG so it's 1.6941 minus 0 0.001043 that gives us 1.6 three zero five seven yeah I'm bringing out our units pretty far so solving all this I actually don't have all this stuff worked out kind of just going along so we have a quality of point five five or point five two two I'm just going to round it off to 6. So now we need to find out what our U is. So again, using the same equation above, our U is equal to our UF plus U or quality times UFG. So U is equal to our UF. At 100 kPa, we have UF of 417.40, right there. So 417.40 plus our quality, which is 0.5226. And UFG, good thing that's already calculated for us. We don't need to subtract anything from anything. So 2088.2. So 0.5226 times 2088.2 plus 417.40. This gives us a final quality. So I'm just going to subscript 3 at our third state is 1508.69. Kilojoules per kilogram. 
So, so now we can find our delta u, which is 2808.8 minus 1508.6. And that should give us a delta U of one thirteen hundred kilojoules per kilogram. And that is our change in internal energy. So again, we started out with a superheated vapor. Um, we found that out by just kind of a hint from the initial problem statement, but we also verified it because we were at 200 kilopascals and our saturated temperature was 120 and our initial temperature was 300. So we know that we're way above our, our T sat. So that kind of, so we know that we're in a superheated state. And then again, our pressure dropped at a constant, at a constant pressure until the saturated vapor and then from there, it rested on our stops, so we knew that it was constant volume as the temperature decreased until it reached 100 kPa. So that is why we went from this state, and then we followed our, our process line until we reached our super or saturated vapor state. And then from there, we dropped straight down because of uh, a decrease in temperature but constant volume until we reached our 100 kPa um, constant pressure line and we just kind of visually inspected that it was had a quality but I mean if you want to look at the charts um, thermodynamics is pretty much all using these charts so if you know how to use these you are good to go as, as well with uh, TV and PV diagrams and yeah if you have any questions just leave a comment below and i'll do my best to get back to you